This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk a little bit more about building DeFi on Bitcoin. In order to understand this, you have to understand the basic principles of what we might call layered architecture. This is how real-world engineering challenges work, whether you're building a house, the way you build on a very firm foundation and you have different layers from the bottom of the house, from the foundation or the slab to the top. It were, it's the same way that the internet has grown as well. You've got the network access layer, the internet layer, transport layer, and then on top of everything, you have the application layer and probably layers on top of that. So this kind of layered architecture is something that exists in the world of software and in the world of real physical objects like homes. The first principle of layered architecture is that you, is that you want to start with a foundation of rock not a foundation of sand. This is what a lot of people don't realize about Ethereum. We've talked about this before, so I'll make it really fast. Ethereum, foundation of sand, huge pre-mine, pre-sale, all these insiders awarded from the beginning, has a history of transaction rollbacks like the 2016 DAO, prominent leader Vitalik who can be co-opted, kidnapped, bribed, otherwise co-opted, extremely difficult to run a full or archival node, which means it's not nearly as decentralized as something like Bitcoin is. Lots of other centralization. The, the ties to Infura, when Infura goes down, which is a, a corporation, when Infura goes down, Ethereum really grinds to a halt and, and you can't even withdraw it from an exchange. The huge reliance on Amazon Web Services, etc., as well as a non-credible future monetary policy. Ethereum has changed its issuance rate and its monetary policy many times over its history. By contrast, Bitcoin really is a foundation of rock, and this is why we would expect DeFi to make its way to Bitcoin, as I'll show later in this video. Bitcoin, no pre-mine, no leader, no corporate headquarters. There's no one to sue, as in the case of Ripple, XRP, or Cardano, or Ethereum, where you have people that uh, you have headquarters, you have foundations, you have uh, prominent leaders that you can sue. Bitcoin has a very credible monetary policy because it's done the same thing for the last 11 years. We know when the last Bitcoin will be mined approximately, and we know when all the halvings will be, etc. There haven't been any changes to the monetary policy. Also very easy to run a full node, very cheap. You can run it on an old laptop, which means that you have much more decentralization. You don't have to let Infura run your full node for you. A lot of news here around Jack Dorsey saying that he's planning to fund a company that will build DeFi primarily on top of Bitcoin. Jack Dorsey seems to be a true Bitcoiner. A lot of Ethereum folks are quite upset about this and their critiques, they're saying, well, Ethereum's already doing this, but the point is that Ethereum is building this on a, tra on a foundation of sand and Ethereum transitioning to proof of stake is gonna make it much more centralized and much more a foundation of sand. Proof of stake is much less secure. It's much easier to game than proof of work, which is what Bitcoin runs on. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe and like button. Also share the, the video with a few friends who are interested in Bitcoin or Ethereum or other cryptocurrencies. Here's where Jack made the announcement. Uh, Jack Dorsey on Twitter made the announcement. Square is creating a new business focused on building an open developer platform with the sole goal of making it easy to create non-custodial, permissionless, and decentralized financial services. Our primary focus is Bitcoin. This is the DeFi part, de decentralized financial services. And they're building on a foundation of rock. Alex Gladstein has a great quote here. Great to see companies committed to building non-custodial, open, decentralized, permissionless money for the world. And he does point out that this is not for every company because what by doing it, they may be reducing their own power in the short term, certainly, if not in the long term. You would never see PayPal doing something like this because PayPal is a centralized database. It's a very centralized monetary network and they don't want to do anything that will undermine this. The fact that they're now accepting Bitcoin lane, you withdraw it, they actually are participating in their own destruction to a certain extent, but they really have no choice. We've talked before about atomic finance, how they pivoted from what they call the Ethereum DeFi Jenga tower to build on a much more solid foundation of Bitcoin uh, using DLCs, which we still need to talk about. They now have a product that you can get beta access to where you can earn yield on your Bitcoin and still 
maintain your custody of the Bitcoin. Now, I believe this is a covered call product. I wouldn't be that interested in that because you're capping your upside in exchange for collecting some premium that manifests itself as yield. Nevertheless, this might be for, for, for some people who want to earn yield on their Bitcoin without using a company like BlockFi, which rehypothecates, lends out your Bitcoin, and also holds your keys for you. So Atomic Finance's version would be much more trustless. We still need to talk about stacks that are building uh, DeFi apps and smart contracts on top of Bitcoin. Uh, RSK is building DeFi on Bitcoin. And if anyone has insight into these projects that they like to share in the comments, please do that. Uh, I'm finding that it's quite a bit to investigate. The purpose of this video is more to show how DeFi is sneaking up, uh, Bitcoin DeFi is sneaking up, and most people are not paying attention. Sovereign uh, decentralized Bitcoin trading and lending platform. Bitcoin really is like a black hole, and eventually everything gets sucked into it. All the value in the world as a store of value. And Bitcoin uh, is, is like a black hole in this way. Now, your altcoin, anything that's on it is just another future feature that will be added to Bitcoin on a layer two or layer three solution or a side chain. This is one reason that it's very, very dangerous to be invested in Ethereum, Cardano, uh, Binance, XRP. These coins really have no chance because they don't have the same immaculate conception that Bitcoin had where it came, where the founder disappeared very early on, doesn't have this, these, these are all much more centralized projects and all of them will eventually probably be sued by the SEC in the same way that Ripple XRP is being sued. Of course, there are going to be all these comments about how I'm a, I'm a dumb Bitcoin maxi in the comment section below. Uh, this is a pretty funny version of Bitcoin maximalist. I don't really like this term. I think it's, uh, it's a substitute for doing the hard work of thinking. I used to uh, spend all my time talking about companies like Apple and Amazon before I had this YouTube channel. I drove my friends crazy, but no one ever called me a dumb Amazon maximalist. And if they had, I wouldn't have ma it wouldn't have bothered me simply because it was very clear that Amazon was like a black hole that was vacuuming up the world. This is a great meme of what recycling day looks like when you have Amazon Prime. We now have Amazon Pay. I can't go through all the companies, Amazon Healthcare, Amazon uh, Pharmacy. It just never ends. The real difference is that Amazon will eventually be subject to antitrust laws. Bitcoin cannot be subject to antitrust laws. It's completely decentralized, but it has this property, which is that uh, money is the ultimate, uh, it's the ultimate virus. It's the ultimate, um, it's the ultimate black hole where everything gets sucked into the best, hardest form of money. And this is what I think we're seeing happening with Bitcoin. Bitcoin has this very special foundation. It has a special history and nothing can really compete with it. The smartest people know this. That's why I'm convinced that people like Vitalik and Charles Hoskinson are actually scammers because they're smart enough to understand this stuff, but they still prefer to issue their own, uh, their own coins rather than building on top of Bitcoin. And so the high IQ people who, uh, who are building their own projects, not on Bitcoin, you can assume they're scammers. The low IQ people, you can assume, just don't understand the phenomenon of money and how money converges uh, to a single money, especially in the digital age. We don't have many different internets. We have one internet that runs on these various protocols. And it would seem to me that this Bitcoin is gonna follow the same, uh, the same path. Software has been eating the world. Bitcoin is a form of software. It's the best form of software money, and it is in the process of eating the world as well. And this is one reason that people like Jack Dorsey, who have really good forward-thinking forward uh, minds who are very, very smart, are choosing to start building DeFi on Bitcoin rather than on Ethereum. Dorsey's a billionaire. He can do whatever he wants, but he wants to be on the right side of history, unlike people like Vitalik. Charles Hoskinson, etc. If you missed yesterday's video, you can check it out where I talk about the Lightning Network on Bitcoin. I haven't discussed this as much as I should. It's a layer two solution that allows you to send money 
send Bitcoin very, very quickly at virtually no cost. And this is a perfect example of something that is just wipe, gonna wipe out Bitcoin Cash, which has really already been wiped out, or BSV or XRP or any of these other cryptocurrencies. The Lightning Network is a layer two solution that is built on the foundation, on a foundation of rock, which is the Bitcoin blockchain layer, which had this immaculate conception. It's highly secure, it's highly uh, decentralized as well. So check that out if you want to learn about a layer two solution that's being used all around the world, places even like El Salvador and parts of Africa. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.